Okay, we're going to talk about the ACT science test and the approaches to this test and ways to maximize your score on it. So on this test, one of the hardest things about science is that it's last. If it were the first test, this would be much easier, but because you've already tested and been in the testing room for over two hours, uh, tested for over two hours, um, this test becomes pretty tricky because there's a lot of thinking involved in it. Okay, going with our metaphor we've used, two goals. One is to upgrade your vehicle to make sure that you can maximize your potential to get from point A to point B. But then the second part is to figure out the best path for you to get to point A to point B based on the vehicle you're in. If you go quickly, you might miss things, but um, speed might be what we have to work on maximizing. Maybe you're cautious, um, but can, can manage a lot of information. You go slower, but you might not get there quite as fast. So a lot of the science test is just figuring out how to manage and maximize your potential. It's nice to know that this isn't purely a science test. It's a, it's a test about scientific terms, scientific knowledge, but what's the, maybe the best way to think about it is a test about reading science material. Kind of an open book science test might be the best way to think about uh, this information. So fantasy sports may seem like an interesting analogy with ACT science, but honestly, ACT science is probably more akin to play, playing fantasy sports. Um, I have a lot of students who do really well on ACT science and they do really well in fantasy sports. I don't know if it's causation or correlation, but they're able to process a lot of information, figure out which players to start, uh, analyze the data and know how to process it. It's not really about a deep understanding of any of the material. It's just about understanding the information you're presented at the moment. So ACT says they have three real sections they test, data representation, research summaries, and conflicting viewpoints. And they give some basic uh, percentile breakdowns of what those are. We're gonna try to break those down even more. Probably one of the best things to, to remember when doing an ACT test is it's really about the scientific process. ACT doesn't expect you to know everything about science, but they do expect you to understand how to approach a problem. And as such, they go through some of the same components that are in the scientific process. They have a conflicts passage, they kind of have a lab report passage, they have some research passages and results passages. The goal is really to take something that may seem confusing and try to bring it into focus so you can see a path forward. I don't know if y'all know Magic Eye, but Magic Eye is one of those uh, interesting tricks where if you stare at the screen in just the right way, you can see a picture emerge. Like on this one on the screen, it's actually a picture of the Statue of Liberty. Not the small pictures, but an outline of the Statue of Liberty. It's right here, right? Her head is right here. Um, there's another one. Uh, you can see the, the birds and the tulips, but this bird right here pops out. And you can see a butterfly up here pop out. Uh, this spells the word value in big letters. Um, there's a shark in this picture. So if you know how to see it, um, they're there. And that's really what ACT science is about. Taking something that you don't completely see and understand and trying to make sense of it. So let's go through these and look at them. We're going to start with conflicts, which is one passage on the test. Just one conflict passage. So conflicts is kind of like looking at an unusual sport. You're going to figure out, well, what's the conflict? And then what are the differences? Um, so here's an example from one test. It was passage two. They're never in the same order. You can see this one has student one, student two, student three, student four. You would first have to figure out what the conflict is. The teacher asked four students to explain how data could be used to predict which samples are composed of the same substances. So there's the, the conflict. And the students are going to explain it. Here is a, another passage from a different test. Um, this one says hypothesis one, two, and three. They'll usually say student or a hypothesis or scientist or method. And so this one says, consider the three, following three hypotheses, hypotheses pertaining to when the butterflies store lipids and when the energy from stored lipids is used with respect to migration and overwintering. So that's the conflict. Each hypothesis is different. And that is what is going on in conflicts. Now here's the thing, there's no shortcut to this one. You pretty much have to read and then go to the questions. And so um, part of your 
your strategy for the ACT is going to figure out when you take this passage. You don't necessarily do them in order. Okay, next we have experiments. This is research. So think of this like lifeguarding or maybe babysitting at a playground. You want to try to understand what is being researched, what are the variables, how is the information presented. Much like if you're having to watch out for a group of people, you know, how big are the waves? Um, is there, are there any, any wildlife I need to worry about? If you're the park, you know, you wonder, does, it, does that dog bite? Um, and so there's just trying to understand the variables as quickly as possible. So here's an example from one test. So it says experiment one, two, and three. There's no disagreement. There's no hypotheses. They're just saying, here's the experiments that were conducted. Another one, study one, study two, study three. And so that's research. Now we also have lab reports, which is a little bit like research. Uh, the only difference is a lab report are going to give you the step by steps involved in conducting the experiment. Um, so you, you'll see this one has study one, one, two, three, four, and then you can see, continue with study two. We have another one that says um, just a long paragraph or paragraphs describing what occurred before the data. So a lab report is very much akin to the research and you're gonna approach them the same way, 30 to 40 seconds to understand what's going on and then get the questions as quickly as possible. Here's one more that has a brief explanation at the beginning and then it describes the study and gives, gives two pieces of data. So in that sense, it's kind of like data also. So data, is going to be more akin to just seeing what you notice. You're not trying to understand the process. You're just saying, you know, it's a picture of an ocean. Here's the beach. It's kind of like, where's Waldo? Can you find Waldo? And in this particular picture, Waldo is, where is Waldo? Um, I can't remember. Oh, wait, there he is. He's right there in the middle. Um, this is a famous picture, by the way, if you have the original book, there is a lady here who's getting water splashed on her right here in the original book. She's not wearing a top. She's topless when somebody splashes water and, uh, there was kind of some controversy over it and they had to, um, pull that book from the shelves and paint a bathing suit on her. But if you have the original, it's actually worth a little bit of, money. um, anyway, back to data. Data is about kind of just examining the Where's Waldo images to see what's going on. So it's not going to have a detailed information about how the experiment was conducted. It's just going to be a chart and a graph and, and you go straight to the questions almost. So I would spend a few seconds going, all right, they're looking at cockroaches, mass of food, time, mass of food remaining. So this is the same thing. And then we move over here and we have type of food and percent by mass. Great. Move the questions 15, 20 seconds in. And then same thing for the next passage. You're going to have two figures, three figures you're looking at. Figure one looks like it's telling you how a circuit was designed. And figure two, we have current voltage and time. Figure three, voltage and time, uh, but no current. And it looks like you have a key that says voltage RLC and then we have uh, amps and uh, voltage supply. So a lot of times ACT gives this information up here for you. Um, and then you just, you just go to the questions. All right, this one has two, two charts again. Now the reason you want to understand that is because you get to these questions quickly. Okay, so they're pretty easy to identify. So what you're going to have, you're going to have a data passage of two to three. That's where you take 15, 20 seconds, look around the room, watch presented, what are the variables, get to the questions. It's like, where's Waldo? So as quickly as you can go to the questions. You're going to have a research passage, which has, um, you, you need a little more time to at least understand the differences in the studies. Um, you don't have to understand it with great depth, but you know, probably 30 seconds to a minute and then you're to the questions. And you have a hybrid, which is somewhere between these is like a lab report. You're going to have the data included, but you might also have the explanation of how it was done. So that one's a little bit slower than data, maybe a little bit faster than research. And in conflicts is examining the teams, what's being studied, what's the conflict, the primary differences. You have to read before you approach the questions or you're probably going to spend a lot of time just trying to understand the questions in general.
So you probably don't know this yet because we haven't practiced a lot, but one of your goals is to figure out how you approach the test because the goal is not to finish. The goal is to maximize correct answers. And as you're maximizing correct answers, if you're a strong test taker, you might want to get conflicts out of the way. Or if you're a strong reader, do conflicts first. That Because there is no shortcut, you can't get to the end of the test if, if conflicts is your last passage. There's no shortcut to it. But if you have a data passage last, you might get only you might get answer half of it and, and be fine. You don't have to read the whole thing, so you can sacrifice two or three questions as opposed to seven questions. If you're a slow test taker with strong understanding, you might also save, save conflicts for last because it's a slow, the slowest passage. If you're a weak test taker or a weak reader, you probably just guess on conflicts. Don't even worry about when to do it. Do the data passages first and then go to research. There is no one correct path of how to do the test. You have to figure out that path for yourself and that's what I'm here to help you with. Uh, now here's the other thing about science. It is very, it's quite varied in the scores. There's some test that you can miss a question on and still get a 36. Uh, there's actually a test that's not on here. You can miss two questions on and get a 36. There are other questions that if you miss a question, it drops you to a 34, right? You miss two questions, it drops you to a 32. And so the test itself, the curve is a little less forgiving than any of the other tests. So it's always nice to consider what your target score might be. So if your target score, we'll always want to say at least two to three points higher than your last test. If this is your target score, then this would be your range of questions you want to get correct. So if you made a 22 to 24 on your last test, you're going to shoot to make a 25 or 28 on this test. And so to get that, you need 27 to 35 questions. That's a big range, I know. But if we go back to the previous slide and look at the um, the, the variation of scores, that's why it's that range. So questions answered, you're going to get about 30 answered. Letter of the day, uh, 10 means you can guess on 10 and you're going to skip one and a half to two passages, right? If you're looking for a 36, you can't skip any passages. You got to get them all right. But if you're looking for a 29 to 32, you can skip one passage, maybe skip conflicts or one of the datas. One of the last things to talk about is that this test requires stamina. You have spent a lot of time on the other test and now you're here and so this means hopefully you had a good snack during break because you get a break before reading the reading test you figured out ways to keep yourself calm and stretch while you're in your seat so you're not uncomfortable it is that is one of the challenges of science they take all these difficult things and at the end they say all right now do this um, if you take a science test by itself your score will hopefully be better uh, well, hopefully it won't be better. Hopefully your best score is on test day, but most likely you can do better at your kitchen table score because you're relaxed, you're comfortable. And that's one of the hardest things about the ACT science is improving stamina to get where you want to be to that comfort level. So on ACT science, remember, we're going to try to figure out the best path for you to take to get from point A to point B. That's our goal. How to get you from point A to point B based on understanding the test and understanding your abilities. So hope we'll, we'll practice a lot and we'll get there.